Welcome to this free anaesthetic tutorial on decontamination. This topic is sneaked into the curriculum and often catches people out in the SOE where they had skipped it for more pressing topics. Given it is an important topic and not too long or arduous, we felt it perfect for a video tutorial. Contents. We will define our terms, describe the Spalding classification of decontamination and then look more closely at the differences between cleaning, disinfection and sterilisation. We will summarise and present questions at the end. Introduction The Spalding classification of decontamination was developed in 1968. It describes three categories based upon the level of risk of infection involved with their use. Critical items These are devices that enter a sterile environment such as the vascular system. Therefore, if the equipment harbours microbials, then the risk of infection is serious, and so it is critical that they remain sterile. Devices include cardiac or urinary catheters and needles. Semi-critical items. These contact mucous membranes and non-intact skin only. Items include breathing circuits, fiber optic scopes and laryngoscopes. Semi-critical devices require disinfection as intact mucous membranes may be susceptible to infection. Non-critical items. These are items that do not come into contact with mucous membranes and therefore are deemed non-critical. For example, blood pressure cuffs or pulse oximeters. There is a low risk of infection transmission, therefore cleaning is usually sufficient. Sterilization. This is statistically the complete destruction of all microbial life including spores. Sterility is measured by the sterility assurance level, which describes the risk that some microbial life may have survived the process. The level of sterility is usually acceptable if there is less than a 1 in 1 million chance of microorganism survival. There are a number of mechanisms of achieving sterility. These individual processes may be asked about in the exams, so it is important to know a little about each process. Steam. If the equipment can withstand exposure to heat and moisture, then this is an efficient, safe and cost-effective method. Microorganisms are destroyed by protein denaturation. Autoclavin makes use of steam. This is essentially a pressure chamber, which combines increased temperature and pressure for a certain time limit to achieve sterility. The most common temperatures are 121 and 134 degrees Celsius. The higher the temperature for a longer period increases the probability of sterility. The minimum cycle times for each temperature are 15 minutes and 3 minutes respectively. Chemical sterilization. If the equipment cannot tolerate steam, then this is the next best thing. Ethylene oxide. This is a colourless and flammable gas which causes antimicrobial activity by targeting protein, DNA and RNA. Temperatures of around 30 to 60 degrees Celsius are used in cycles lasting up to about 12 hours. Despite not needing high temperatures, the duration of sterilisation is longer than steam. There is a risk of toxicity and currently respiratory equipment is not recommended to be sterilised via this process. It is a relatively expensive and resource intensive process. Glutaraldehyde 2% This method tends to be used for optical equipment such as scopes. If used for less than around 10 hours, then sterilization is less likely to occur and equipment may only be disinfected. Plasma This is a newer technique. This is an ionized gas containing free radicals which inactivate microorganisms. It is a shorter sterilization time compared to ethylene oxide with a lower risk of human toxicity. Disinfection Disinfectants are generally unable to remove microbiological spores, however there are some higher level disinfectants, such as glutaraldehyde, that if left long enough will produce sterility. Disinfectants include alcohols, glutaraldehyde and hydrogen peroxide. Glutaraldehyde is generally used for disinfecting endoscopes. Generally, the external surface is cleaned and visible debris are removed. The internal mechanism is flushed with detergent and then the scope is exposed to glutaraldehyde. The minimum exposure time is around 20 minutes following, um, followed by rinsing of the glutaraldehyde. Cleaning. This is an important component of the decontamination process and involves removing all visible organic debris. It lowers the burden of contamination for the processes of disinfection or sterilization and is the method of decontamination of non-critical items. Cleaning is usually via detergent and water in less than 45 degrees Celsius and this prevents a biofilm forming. Ultrasonic waves may be used to clean items, however not all equipment can tolerate this process. In summary, there is a spectrum of risk dependent on bodily exposure, 
the higher the risk of introduction of infection to a sterile cavity, then the greater the importance of complete removal of infective material from equipment used to access the cavity. There are a number of ways to perform cleaning, disinfection and sterilization, and these have relative advantages and disadvantages. It is important to the anaesthetist to appreciate the spectrum of decontamination to reduce the burden of infection transmission in their own practice. Thank you for listening to this free anaesthetic tutorial. If you have any questions or any feedback, please let us know. Our email is freeanaestheticutorials at gmail.com. We have an Instagram, a Facebook and a YouTube page.